Hi everyone. So I've been asked a lot for an update on what happened with the uh, interview meeting thingo today um, in regards to this situation with the Govita at Monopara. I know I used their name again. Um, basically, to go from, from this morning, I uh, was contacted by the centre owner of the Manipara Shopping Centre who asked that I come in for a meeting. So I agreed to that. Uh, while waiting to head in for the meeting, I called the Govita head office. And I've since had to delete the recording of that as I've been informed that it was actually illegal. Whoops. Um, but those who heard it heard that it went freaking nowhere, to put it politely. Um, basically, they were more concerned with the fact that I was slandering their franchise than than what had actually happened. Um, so I did record that and I did put it on YouTube. To be fair, I didn't intentionally record it. I forgot that I had a call recorder on my phone and it wasn't until about midway through the conversation that I went, hang on, I'm recording this. Oh, that's handy. Anyway, um, so I posted that on YouTube and I shared that on Facebook. Then I headed in for the meeting. At first I met with the centre owner and I believe it was the marketing manager, maybe? Retail, man some, retail manager or marketing ma manager, one of the two. Um, they sat me down and, you know, it seemed like they genuinely cared until I walked away and had time to think about what was said. But they asked me about Lucas. They asked me if, uh, you know, how I was feeling, if I was okay, blah, blah, which was all well and fine. I counted no less than five times in that first meeting, which lasted about 10, 15, 20 minutes, maybe about that. Um, I was asked to delete my posts and I said that I wasn't going to yet, that I wanted to see what kind of resolution was going to be reached. They then repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly requested uh, for me to meet with the proprietor of the Govita store. And I wasn't comfortable with it. I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to speak to her, but they kept going. And eventually I just kind of gave in. Um, so I... I'm exhausted. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so I left for half an hour and then came back and met with her as well. And it was a clusterfuck. Basically, it was a good half hour or so of just abject emotional manipulation. Um, I didn't get any further apology than, I'm really sorry if what I said was taken the wrong way. That was the closest I got to a real apology. Um, she tried to run this, this concept that she just really cared about my son. She just really, really wanted to help with my son. And... She, she kept pushing that point and I'm kind of sitting there thinking you really really care about my son you don't know my son you've not spent more than five minutes with him and anyway I, I tried to, to really express and get across the fact that um, you know it wasn't just what she said it was the fact that it was said in front of my son it was the fact that he heard it and because he's non-verbal he can't really communicate to me you know I heard this and it really upset me and I don't understand why it was said I really tried to get that point home and she's just sitting there and crying and crying and crying and crying which again on face value seemed like she just genuinely cared like she was genuinely upset about it and the store owner sorry the um Manipara owner kept going like you know if you knew her personal story you'd understand that she's just a really kind caring person and I'm kind of thinking to myself, like, what's her personal story got to do with this? Like, it's not relevant to the situation. Then she told me what her personal situation was. And don't get me wrong, it is incredibly sad and I very much feel for the woman. But I feel like it was being used to manipulate me, to, to get me to back down and, and see her as just this incredibly kind, caring lady who just wanted to help. She completely completely repeatedly again and again kept bringing it up and like I said 
as much as it's incredibly sad, it has no relevance to the situation. Then they made these a bunch of hollow promises like they were going to do a, a course on autism awareness and, and a couple of other things. But they wanted me to go and find the courses for them. They, they weren't going to organize it themselves. And while it seems like a kind, you know, and genuine gesture in, in words, I couldn't see any form of action taking place. Then I counted no less than a dozen times over the course of the half hour uh, while talking to her and after she left that I was berated into deleting my posts um, and manipulated to the point of being told that uh, they were scared for her safety because of my comments on the comments on my original video um, that you know what if something happened to her what if someone that was saying all these things came in and actually harmed her I wouldn't want that on my conscience would I I wouldn't want to feel guilty for that would I and I'm just kind of thinking like I, and I kept saying to them other people's comments are not my responsibility it's it's not my job to control what other people say what they say and what they do that's got nothing to do with me and they they kept just trying to say like you know it, it would be my they basically insinuated that if someone went in there and attacked her because of my post it would be my fault right and this just kept going around in circles and circles and circles until I just got so exhausted I just basically went yep yeah, okay whatever whatever you know whatever you want to do fine and then I left not half an hour later the money power owner calls me again and tells me that he spoke with Govita's head office and they were threatening to take the matter to the police about my post because of the comments on it and getting the police involved and having me charged and yeah, you know, no matter how much I think about it, I can't figure out what I could be charged with. Uh, to be fair, my post of the original phone call recording is illegal. I'm aware of that. I've been made aware of that by several people and I have taken it down. I've kept it for future reference, but I'm, I haven't, haven't deleted it, but I've taken it down. So it's not viewable by the public. Um... But, you know, the more I think about this whole thing since that appointment, since since that meeting, I feel like I was just extremely emotionally manipulated, that there was no resolution, and it was basically just, we're going to do whatever we can to shut you up and make this go away and make it seem like we care, but we really just want you to go away. And during that meeting as well, sorry, I'm trying to keep this as short as I can, but I really want to get all this out so I don't have to keep writing comments. Um, during that meeting, I brought up the uh, comments made by other people and other incredibly man malicious things that have been said. Um, and it was completely brushed over. I even mentioned one comment, which I have screen caps of, where um, the person mentioned that the woman in question tried to feed her child um, a product with gluten, swearing black and blue it had no gluten, when this child was, you know, it has celiacs to the point of uh, anaphylaxis at gluten exposure. Um, I brought all of this up and it was just glazed over. She, she kept saying that she just cares so much and sometimes she goes over the line because she cares so much. And I said to her, like, you've driven people to the point of tears. You've seriously hurt people with this, you know, advice that you give. And she's like, oh, yeah, I should probably, you know, try not to do that. But there was no real accountability. There was no real consequence for any of it. I tried to speak for everyone that's been hurt by this woman. And I was just completely ignored. It, it was just brushed over. Um... And in saying that apparently Govita are going to go to the police, I haven't heard from them again. They've got my phone number, they've got my contact details, I haven't heard anything further. So I don't know whether that was legitimate or whether that was uh, Monopara trying to find another way to get me to take my post down. But I can honestly say all it's done is ensure that I'm keeping it up. I'm keeping it up and I'm making sure that people are aware of this situation because the, the main point that I tried to make today, and I think a lot of other parents out there with autistic children will very much agree to, is that my son can't speak for himself. I'm his voice. I'm his advocate. It is my job to protect him from exactly those kind of attitudes. And 
I'm not going to go away. I'm not going to be quiet because it inconveniences them and makes them look bad. I'm not going to just make this situation go away because it's absolutely appalling. It is disgusting that I've experienced this. It's disgusting that other people have experienced this. And the fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, regardless of a person's personal circumstances, I didn't walk into that store knowing that she has a story. I walked into that store and asked for some melatonin. That's it. I didn't ask for advice. I didn't ask for parenting advice. I didn't ask to be told to take my son to be trained like a dog. Did I? No. And neither did any of the people that walk in that store, right? They don't ask to be told how to live their lives. They just ask to buy a product, right? Okay. So, <coughs> pardon me. Got a cough. Killing me. Um, so, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to go away. I'm not going to be quiet. My video is very nearly at 20,000 views and it's going to stay up. And that's, that's the final decision that I've made on the matter. They can call the police. There's nothing that the police can do. Social media is a bitch like that. So, yeah. Uh, as for the comments on my post, I really appreciate the support that I'm receiving. I really do. It means the world to me. I, I can't begin to describe how validating it feels to have so many people tell me, yeah, no, that's not okay. What's been said is not okay. Um, I, I would really like people to stop inboxing me with unsolicited advice. Like, oh, you received horrible unsolicited advice. Here, let me give you some more. It's not helpful. Especially the people who, the few people who have actually tried to sell me products like doTERRA. Um, <laughs> I'm the wrong person to bring that stuff to, but essential oils are not going to cure my son any more than dog training. Um, but yeah, in general, the, the, the response has been incredibly supportive and I really appreciate that. Um, I will keep everybody updated on this situation if anything is, uh, changes or is added to it, but I am a permanently exhausted pigeon. I am so tired. And I'm going to go get some rest, I think. But 